Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance. Today's tour reviews are product by Kiwitz. Now I've reviewed some of their products in the past and just like those, they also sent me this product for free. So I did not buy this. So I'm going to market pay promotion, but that's as far as it goes. They're not paying me to make this video. I'm not making any money off of it. I'm not an affiliate with them or anything like that. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about this one. This is their thermal imaging camera. It's the KTI W01. I've been actually wanting a thermal imaging camera for quite some time. I just never have been able to pull the trigger on one because I'm just, it's one of those things where I dig so much into it and I don't really know what I'm looking for. Uh, so I am glad they sent me this one out so I could try it out. I've been back and forth on whether or not I wanted one that hooked into my phone. Uh, there's several options out there. That seems to be the most cost effective option anyway. It seems like those are a little bit cheaper. But at the same time, whenever it comes to my phone, I was like, well, they're liable to change what kind of port my phone takes to charge and hook accessories in, you know, a year from now when I upgrade my phone and then my thermal imaging camera is not going to work with it. So I actually had already decided if I got one, I was kind of wanting to get a, you know, by itself, just handheld unit, not tied to my phone in any way. And plus it makes me to where I'm not tied to my phone while I'm doing work with it or something like that. So again, this is the KTI w01 it's going to run you around 300 dollars on amazon but they also have a 40 dollars off coupon i don't know if that's all the time but that's what's running right now so you're looking at 260 dollars uh that's in that price range of kind of a budget friendly i guess it just depends on how good it is thermal imaging camera there's not very many out there that you're going to get less than 300 dollars so maybe this is that budget friendly one that you've been looking for i'll go over all the features what you get in the box, I'm going to go through all the settings and then explain some of the uses that I plan to use it for and show it to you in action. So let's go ahead and get into what this thermal imaging camera can do. So let's start out with what you're going to get for your $260 to $300. Just depends on what that coupon is at the moment. Comes in a very nice box, I will say. It does have a lot of uh, good information and things like that on it. It's a very big, substantial box. Uh, nice pictures on it. Not that you're ever going to probably ever use it again. It's probably going to go to a landfill. Some people collect boxes and keep them for their products and stuff like that. But what's in the box is way more important. Inside that box, you're going to get this case. I'm going to say the same thing I always say about these cases. It's very much like a sunglass case to me. It's stiff enough to protect what's inside, but it's also kind of soft, uh, which makes it a little bit better feel in my opinion. And then inside, you're of course going to get your thermal imaging camera. It is tucked away in a form-fitted uh, fashion to where it's not gonna move around inside of there. You don't have to worry about it getting damaged. And then they have a zipper pouch here that has just enough room to have your uh, user manual that you can keep with you. Does come with a USB-C cord as well. And then this one actually does come with a wall charger that you plug into the wall. It's actually inside my house right now. So uh, you just have to take my word for that. So all that could get tucked away inside of there that's nice that it comes with all that and then within the unit itself you're going to get the unit it, it has the batteries built into it as i mentioned it does come with a usb-c cable it does charge via usb-c right there there's a usb-c port and then on top of that it also has memory built in it's got a 32 gigabyte internal memory it stores photos and video so your photos are going to be in jpeg format and then your videos are going to be in mp4 and you'll use that same USB-C cable to plug it into the unit here, hook it up to your computer. You can just drag and drop the videos off of those. I'll have some videos that I'll show here in a minute that I took using this and it show you kind of what it looks like. Features and settings wise, pretty much if you go over here on the back side, there's the model number again, KTI W01. The resolution on this is 256 by 192. It has a temperature range of negative 20 degrees Celsius to 550 celsius or negative 4 fahrenheit to 1022 fahrenheit and it's got two different settings in here for your temperature range the first setting on low is from negative 4 to 248 fahrenheit and then it's also if you go up to 2 it's going to be 248 to 1022 so it basically has a low setting and a high setting and if you're in that low setting and something goes over that 248 it's going to show over on your screen so if we start out by powering this unit up we'll go ahead and turn it on here by holding the power button it takes a few minutes for it to load up after we've got it booted up i'm going to lift up this protective lens cover that's built into it so that's nice again so when you're putting it away and you're not using it you can flip that down i'm going to zoom in on this screen here as we go through the settings so again you're going to go into menu you're going to have 
photos so you can scroll through the photos that you've recently taken i'm not sure if i've got some stored on here or not i'm gonna check yeah so i have a few so i can go in and i can look at this photo there's one of the photos that i'll show you in a minute and then we'll back up and then you can also do the same thing on your videos then you get into the color palette section there are several different color palettes that you can choose from iron is probably your typical one that you're going to use you have spectrum which uses more colors cool white and black you can cycle through those as you go through there i think i've got one in a little bit that i'll show you that is in white then the next thing you have is emissivity which you can basically change the setting on this i'm not a expert in this so i couldn't tell you i know this 0 0.95 seems to be the typical and then everything else and they've got it in the user manual so basically what that is if you know kind of what the emissivity is of whatever it is you're checking whether it's wood concrete whatever you can change this setting and it kind of will give you a more accurate measurement is how it's mentioned inside the user manual. Again, I'm kind of new to thermal imaging, so I'm just going through this and I have nothing else to compare this to, but I feel like it's a pretty good one so far in the amount that I've used it. So then you can get into settings. You have auto shutdown, so you can turn it to where it shuts itself down uh, within, I think it's five minutes, 20 minutes, or turn that auto shut off off. You can get into your brightness levels which I might go ahead and see if I can turn this up on high now. See if that helps y'all see a little bit better. I normally keep that on low just to save on battery life. Here's all the available languages that it comes in. So that way if English is not your language, you can look and see if one of those is your language, which some of those I can pronounce. The bottom two, I don't know what those are. Uh, units of measurement, so you can go from Celsius and Fahrenheit, whichever way that you are. If you use Celsius as your temperature range, or if you use Fahrenheit, you can change that. Uh, so I like that, and it stays that way every time you, you don't have to change that every time you power it on and off. Uh, you get into your temperature range. Again, that's where you have your low, which is negative 4 to 248, or your high, which is 248 to 1022 Fahrenheit. And I'm sure if I change that up to Celsius... I can tell you what the range is on that as well. So we'll go back in and go to temperature range. And that gives you negative 20 to 120 is your low. And 120 to 550 is your high on that. So I'm going to go back and change that real fast. So that I don't get mixed up on something. Uh, your time format. So you can change it to 24 hour or your time. And then you can set your time. That way for whenever you take videos and pictures. You've got a documentation of you know when did I take this video so that your client can see yeah it was at my house it was at that time uh, and then you can take and turn your spot on or off that's the spot that you'll actually see here in a minute whenever i'm showing it to you and then the version so that's pretty much all your settings uh one of the main settings that i really like on it as far as using it and if i turn on my i'm gonna go ahead and turn on my Metabo heat gun over here so you can see that i've also got a cup of coffee that's kind of getting cold uh, but one of the settings that I like is on my screen you can see it gives you the min and the max at all times of whatever so right now the green is the coldest thing in the room the red is the hottest thing that's on my screen and then my spot is right there in the middle showing 71 degrees that's where I'm actually pointing at so if I go over here you can see that the Metabo heat gun is heating up and getting a little bit hotter I'm going to turn that off just so it's not noisy uh, so that's some of the main things that I like on it is that min and max feature. I don't know if that's a typical thing on all of them, but it shows you all those things. And then another, another one of the settings that I really like is just by pressing the left and right buttons here, I can change the layers of which I'm looking at this screen. Uh, so right now I'm in thermal imaging, but if I press to the right, I get into basically I'm looking through the screen just like it would be a you know a camera on my phone. It's not like it's as clear a picture as my iPhone but it's still a pretty nice picture so if you're recording and you just want to be able to show the customer here's what you're looking at but then now let me change over to thermal and now it's because you not might not have been able to see to tell what am i looking at right now what location am i looking at but if you had someone's air conditioning unit in a regular picture and you're recording then you'd be able to just say as i was recording i swapped over to thermal and here's what you can see and to take a picture all you do is press this button once and it will say, do you want to store the photo? Yes. So I'll store that photo. If I want to take a video, I just have to long press and hold that down. It's going to say start recording. 
yes. And then when I'm done recording, I just press and hold down the button again, and it's going to say end recording. So now it's going to save it as whatever that file is. And again, you get 28 gigabytes of available space or 32 gigabytes total memory, but it says 28 is available in the user manual. I think that's plenty enough room, and I like the fact that it's built in. I didn't have to buy a micro SD card or anything like that. So factor that into your price. Uh, whenever you're going over and you're looking at other people's options, you might have to buy a memory card. It may cause it to be a little bit more expensive. So that's pretty much all the features of it. I think the only thing I didn't cover is it does have a rechargeable battery. It is stored inside of this handle here, which you can pop out, and it is kind of a changeable battery. It's not real easy to get this out, but again, you charge it by using the device. But if you ever did need to change this out, it is a 3,500 milliamp, 3.7 volt uh, battery there, 18650. Uh, so I think that does have like a little plug up there. Maybe they sell additional batteries for if you have a problem with one that you can change that out later. Uh, without having a buyer, I'm sure you could probably take that to a battery store and get that replaced if that was something you needed to do. So I think that's pretty much all the features that I know of. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you in some use modes that I kind of did just to give you an idea of how you might would use this. But again, I'm interested. Comment down below if, you're, if you've been a thermal imaging person for a long time. All I've ever had is the little infrared guns and things like that. And to me, the big difference with this is you can use this like an infrared gun, but it gives you a whole lot bigger picture of everything that's going on around you to give you more information. And sometimes information is the key to being able to understand and diagnose what the real problem is. But let me go ahead and show you some of the ways that I've used this. So again, just in showing you maybe the accuracy, I guess, I decided I'd go ahead and film making a cup of coffee. So with this, you're going to see... Uh, the actual video footage of it in use, how it records. So this is how it shows up as a recording whenever you was going to show it to somebody. You can see me making a cup of coffee here and the temperature changing and all the things that go along with that. And then when I was done with it, I went ahead and took a thermometer like this, stuck it down in the cup of coffee, compared that to the setting that's on here. And it's showing me over there in the red, the highest temperature that I'm actually seeing on my screen. And you can see it's very comparable. It's right, right around 157-ish degrees Fahrenheit so it's pretty accurate in that way uh, it's at least almost identical to what I'm reading with a actual thermometer and of course I'm not having to stick anything into the liquid using this gun right here another thing I'm doing is I as you can see here as I go through an area where I'm doing a bathroom remodel I'm able to I just now got done putting a coat of drywall mud on one side of my corners and some seams and if I turn it over to the white mode I can actually tell where I've mudded and where I've not. So what's dry and what's not. I don't know that I will specifically use this in this application because I can pretty much tell whenever I walk in just by feeling of something. Uh, but just to give you an idea of kind of the look of what a white thermal imaging screen looks like, you can get an idea by looking at that. Another example would be to use this in electrical. Uh, I'm looking at a breaker box right now, and as you can see, one breaker is warmer than the rest. That's a 30 amp breaker that is the dryer, and it's actually running right now, so that's why it's showing that. So uh, there's nothing wrong with that breaker. There's nothing wrong with that dryer, but if I took that cover off because I was having an electrical issue, I could see all the wires. I could see the temperature of the wires. I could see the whole picture in a way that you're not going to be able to see it with your naked eye. You're not going to be able to see it with some other kind of test equipment or something like that. I know I've seen this used a lot of times in radiant flooring. I don't even know anybody that has radiant flooring or I was going to go actually kind of check it out. But I've seen lots of people, whether it's Mikey Pipes and all the other people on YouTube. So if you go in and you're installing uh, flooring or something like that, and somebody's got radiant flooring, this will give you a rough idea of where it's at in comparison. So maybe you won't shoot a nail through it or whatever it might be. It's just something that might be helpful. And again, it's giving you more information than you can absolutely see with your own naked eye or with other equipment. You could use it for cold spaces to find where that uh, cold spot is. Maybe you need to add some insulation in some areas. Again, all those things that you might would normally stick this at and shoot an infrared thermometer to get a temperature reading, you could use it for that, and then, uh, but you're getting everything else that's around it. Like right now, if I was on this cup of coffee, but I can see that maybe I've got something else going on over here in the background, it just gives me more information of what's going on, something I might not would have checked, or even just for, it's pretty cool at nighttime, if you hear a noise at something, you can go outside, nobody's gonna be able to hide from you. You can go full predator mode. <laughs> And you'd 
be able to see anybody that was hiding in the bushes unless they covered themselves up with mud, I guess. At least that's the way it worked in the movies. But again, it's the same info in a way as your infrared. It's going to give you that temperature on your spot, but you're getting a whole lot more information. And that more information may be the difference in giving you the right diagnosis whenever you look at it. I'm interested to know how you guys are using your thermal imaging camera. I'm interested to know if any of you have this one by Kai Wheats. Uh, if you've been liking it, if you've got another version that's comparable, price range and all that kind of stuff, or even if you've got one that's really expensive, but it's just top notch. So again, it depends on how much you're going to use it, what you're using it for, how important is the information that you're getting from it, whether or not you need to spend $2,000 on one that you send off to get calibrated and all those sorts of things. Or if you're like me, I'm going to use this just to get information. I'm going to use this to help me diagnose something, to help me maybe relay something to the customer. I'm going to use the images and the photos and the videos and all those things just to help me relay to the customer, this is the issue that you have going on. And now I think this is the right way for us to go about fixing it. It's just a tool to help you do that. And I think for the price of $260 with that coupon, it might be a good fit for several people out there. Now there are more expensive ones. There are cheaper ones. I don't know if those are better. I don't know if those are worse. This is the only one I've ever owned, but I can see this being very useful in the future to come, and I'm excited, and I want to thank Kai Wheats uh, for sending it to me and giving me the opportunity, and I'm glad I get to share it with you guys. But again, let me know in the comments below what you think about the features on it in comparison to maybe some other ones that you've seen, because again, I don't know anything about any other ones. I have been doing some research on different ones, but I'm not a thermal imaging expert, so I'm just more than anything sharing with you the features of this one sharing with you how it worked whenever I first started out using it to let you have a first-hand view of maybe your expectations for it and to find out if maybe it's the right tool for you. Because again, as I say always, only you know if this is something that would fit you. You know exactly how you would use technology like this if that was something you needed to use. If you're in automotive, this would probably be handy. I would know nothing about that because that's not my forte, even though I do a little bit of that for myself. I'm not a professional in that way so i don't even know how there's i'm sure there's several ways that you could use this that would be extremely beneficial that you know and i don't know but hope this was useful i hope it's informative let you know if this is the right tool for you let me know what you think about it in the comments below as always stay safe have a blessed day i'll see you on the next video